Okay, hello everyone and thanks for joining us. During this webinar I'm going to run through some tips and features that you might not know about and the goal is going to be to help you become better at using iRise. I'm going to go through them quickly so you can drill down later if you have any other questions but I'm going to try to keep it fast paced. The first topic is using sketches and images as the basis for your pages. What you can do in iRise is you can drag images um, which can be pictures of sketches that you've taken or they can be JPEGs or PNGs from products like Sketch or Photoshop, and you can drag them into the Screens panel. And when you do that for the first time, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically create prototyping pages for you. And if you size them to fit a mobile page, it will actually create mobile page types for you, and then when you preview them, they'll use the mobile emulator. So once you've created your set of pages, if you drag updated images into the Screens panel, that have the same file name as the previous iterations, it's going to ask you if you want to replace them. So what you do is you click Replace, and it's going to update all the pages with the new iteration. And this is a great way to get up and running fast, so that you can start socializing your designs and gathering feedback and requirements, while the design team can continue their work separately from you, uh, because as their screens are replaced, the functionality that you add, that stays in place as well. So maybe you're adding form elements or other interactions. Those all stay, stay in place as the new images are imported. Now this tip is actually a perfect lead into our next topic, which is hotspots. Now there are other more basic tools out there that only offer hotspots. Um, and at iRise, you can go a lot further with more complex interactions. So I think that a lot of people tend to overlook hotspots. But they're a great tool if you want to quickly create click-throughs, and basic interactions. Let's use these pages that we've imported. Now what you might want to do is add navigation, say, from a logo and go to another page. So what you can do is just drag a hotspot and then set your target. And remember that, of course, with hotspots, you can use all the other iRice triggers and actions as well uh, and go beyond just navigation. But for this example, we'll just set the navigation to go to a new page. And then if we preview, see that it's working. So the next topic I want to cover is cutting and pasting when it makes sense. And the way this works is using a sniping tool or you can right click and copy an image from the web, you can paste images directly onto iRise pages. So let's say we're going to prototype the iRise homepage and add some content. Well there may be areas that you don't need to prototype because they're more of window dressing. Right? They're not going to be interactive. You just need them in place. Um, and what you can do is you can grab them using the sniping tool and then right click and select paste from another app and then control V to drop them onto your page. And you can also use this technique a bit like tracing paper. And if I needed to create something similar to say this login widget, I could paste it in. Maybe I might want to lock it or even adjust the transparency. And then I can use it as a guide as I create the prototype. The next tip I want to talk about is utilizing our wireframe fonts. And you can access them directly from the font library. You'll see them here. You have a few scribble fonts and also a traditional block font for wireframing. And these are also used in our wireframe library. And their value is that you can create wireframes, but then by simply switching the font from the wireframe font to a standard font like Arial, you can quickly go from lo-fi to hi-fi without rebuilding the pages from scratch.
And if you don't yet have the text content, you can always use lorem ipsum as a placeholder. The next quick tip is somewhat related to wireframing. Let's say you have a more high fidelity prototype, but you want to show it in a way that won't distract the viewer from colors and design. And instead you want to focus more on the layout and interactions. Well, in the top right hand corner of player, you have a present in grayscale option. And if we select it, what it's going to do, it's going to pulse and then convert your pages to grayscale. and it will stay in that mode until you switch it back. So next I want to touch on using our web importer tool to create libraries and templates. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here because we actually have a nice video that goes into this topic in detail. So you can check that out if you want to dive deeper. But I'll give you a few highlights here. So libraries should be a key part of your prototyping work in iRise. Once you build something, whether it be a widget or a completed page, if there's a possibility that you want to reuse it, you want to save that to your custom library. And to do that, what you do is you select a widget, and then right click and choose Save Selection as a Widget. And then you'll find it here in your custom library. Well, this functionality, when you pair it with our Web Importer plugin, can be really powerful. I actually had someone during a, a demo recently tell me that they were going to go crazy if they had to create another login widget. Well, with this technique, uh, they might not have to. So let's say that that person has a login widget that they've already created from an existing app like this one. What they can do is they can use the iRise Chrome Web Importer plugin and import it into iRise. And it's going to examine the page. And then if we hit the import button, then we click this link here to go directly to the page. And we can see here that it did a pretty darn good job. We'll see that these text inputs, they actually imported as text inputs, as did this button. And it's even keeping the transparency settings here and the included CSS. If we look at the live version of this page, it looks like the labels animate. So we can add an action to the text input. So when someone clicks the input for the action, we want to move it. Then we'll select the widget that we want to move, which is this text label. Let's move it, say, negative 30 pixels vertically. And now let's test it out. All right. Now this library you're creating is available to everyone on the project, but you can also make it available to other projects as well. And the way that you do that is yet you move this project, or maybe you might want to make a copy of it and then move it. And you move it to the libraries folder, this one here. And something to keep in mind for this process is that you can actually set permissions for this project the same way you can do all other projects. So if you want to give everyone access, you can do that. You can see that's what we've done here for these other library files. Or you can give individual or group access um, if you want to limit who can see it. All right, let's cover one last tip. Now, Importer is also a great way to quickly create page templates. So let's say we've imported a page and we've kept the header and footer and want to make it available to the entire team as a starting point. So what you do is you just right click on it in the screens panel and select save as template. And then when you create a blank page, you'll have this page to use as an option as your starting point. So that's it for this webinar. Hopefully you found it helpful and you learned some new things. Uh, if you have any questions or you would like to suggest topics for the next webinar, 
If you head on over to iRise.com and you can use the chat icon in the bottom right hand corner of the page. Or you can send questions or requests directly to info at iRise.com. So thanks for joining us and have a good day.